Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines we have for you. We got Mark Yusko giving us the ABCs of the digital age, Bitco CEO in the next six months. We got a little update from the SEC versus Ripple, but don't worry. You're going to want it. It's not huge. Digital Yuan taking over de-dollarization. We got Shanghai Clearing House and Distributed Ledger Technology. We got Shanghai Bank and Ripple. We got FedNow and Ripple and FedNow and Ripple Partners. It's an explosion. Baby, somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube at the top of the screen for exclusive content. Right now, it is $1.22 trillion market cap for cryptocurrency. The market is off by 1.1%. Good afternoon, everybody. Bitcoin, 30300 plus. Ethereum, 1800 plus right now. We see Tether market cap, $83.1 billion plus. And we see XRP still holding at $0.48. Cents. Critical, critical price point, the technical analysts say. If we can hold there or stay above, it's good news for all of us. If you haven't done it right now, I Trust Capital is the best crypto gold silver IRA on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't mind telling you, I've been a customer for a very long time. And I want to tell you, if you haven't taken advantage of it, click the link underneath of the video and check it out for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you, the only thing better than buying crypto is buying tax-free crypto and getting institutional custody, even though we're retail investors. And that's exactly what you can do at iTrust Capital. Here we see Mark Yusko, who gives the ABCs on the new digital age here. He doesn't let the narrative be laid down for him. He says what's going on. Listen to what he his, his reply to this. And I think it's so fitting because artificial intelligence has been a real, real movement since it's been introduced on the scene, whether it's chat GPT or some other form of it that you're interfacing with. But I'll tell you. It is clear to see that it is going to be an explosion that will be massive and felt very quickly throughout the world, artificial intelligence in so many different ways. But what I love is the way Mark Yusko answers this question. And, you know, look, full clarity, I don't agree with a lot of what Mark Yusko says about Bitcoin, but nevertheless, that's a conversation for another day. I like his answer here. Let's take a listen. I'm just not convinced that this matters in a bold face way. I mean, it seems to me that crypto and Web3 kind of lost the narrative. This was supposed to be the future of finance and the future of, you know, technology. A lot of people, the future of commerce, a lot of people were saying. Now that narrative has moved to AI and crypto is sort of more in the metaverse bin. Why is that wrong? And does this move and others like it that we're talking about today, does that move uh, crypto and Bitcoin specifically any closer to being in charge of the narrative again? Well, I, I think I think the, the narrative's actually completely wrong. The, the idea that mm -hmm. the digital assets are in the waste bin, you know, seems kind of silly to me. We're talking about a $1.2 trillion asset from zero uh, 14 years ago, half a trillion in Bitcoin alone. Well, but we're not talking kind of about silly like, to say it's, it's we're, we're not talking speed. about we're not talking about NFTs or virtual real estate in the same way anymore. People aren't trying to get by the virtual place next to Snoop Dogg's house. Like people are concerned about actual commercial real estate right now. Well, Wouldn't no, that's, that's been the whole point all along, right? Blockchain technology is one of the four pillars of the digital age, the ABCDs, as we call them. It's AI blockchain technology, computer chips, and data. Those four things are transforming the way we store and exchange value. The same way that media was completely disrupted by the internet and the value of the biggest media assets went to new assets, the same thing's happening in financial services. It's a long process. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens over decades. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction 
of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. Uh, see, now that right there is about the best answer you could ever lay down. And shout out to Mark Yusko for that, because I think he's absolutely spot on here. And listen, from an investor in this space, you don't think that I haven't written down AI, blockchains, computer chips, and data as a reminder to me of different areas and segments that I want to investigate further to see whether I want to put some money in some companies in either one of those spaces. Because I do believe he's got it right here. That is the ABCDs of crypto, or, or the digital age rather, and I will be focusing and broadening my scope for it, not financial advice. Bitco uh, terminated its prime trust acquisition, but we've got some pending. He says, uh, I haven't been able to announce them yet. Listen to this quick clip he says here about the next six months in crypto. Any plans for any other acquisitions? Uh, yes. Uh, well, we've got some pending. Uh, I haven't been able to announce them yet. Um, but I think, you know, there's going to be consolidation in the space over the next six months. Uh, firms that raised money uh, just, a, you know, a, a year ago, you know, obviously the climate has changed. And so now it's time to kind of join forces with companies that are a little bit larger. So bitco has got the opportunity, I hope, to, to be able to, um, bring in some adjacent businesses that really help, you know, bolster and strengthen us as a full service custodian. Any plan? And there you have it. And over the next six months, there's going to be some mergers, acquisitions happening. You can bet that. And I think it goes beyond big go what they're doing. That's what the suppression of this space is all about from my house. That's why Gary Gensler's been such a a, 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 a fear monger and a regulation by enforcement uh, cop with the SEC uh, stamping out innovation because he wants to make way for the large legacy firms to come into this space as they crush the innovators of it. Don't believe it. It's still true. Makes me sick too. John Deaton says here, I just got an email of a filing in the Ripple case and I must have admit, he says, I got butterflies in my stomach, but it was just a lawyer withdrawing from the case. To be clear, a lawyer withdrawing means nothing. It's not a signal that the case settled or anything substance whatsoever. So there is the actual filing right there. It's an update, but not the one we're looking for. Here, let's change gears a little bit here. As we see the IMF, the BIS, they're all instituting these new payment rails, payment systems for cross-border and otherwise. Fed now, domestic payment rails. We see it all over the world. This is a quick conversation here about the digital yuan is taking over and yuanification will reign, but it will be a graduate takeover. And this is really talking about the rise of the digital yuan and the de-dollarization of the U.S. dollar itself. Take a listen to this before we move forward, because we got some breaking news here over in Shanghai. I want to turn to you, Daryl, and uh, I, I'd like to get your view on how geopolitics is shaping the CBDC uh, race, if you will, and how that might affect uh, the, the the possibility of change uh, in in the in, in the international monetary system. Um, so over to you, Dow. Uh, thanks so much, Pierre. And I hope we don't get into uh, issues of war. But you're right; it is a the very idea of currency dominance is a big geopolitical issue, and it has been historically, going back to uh, uh, foreign policy discussions involving currency dominance, like Giscard d'Estaing's famous comment about the exorbitant privilege of the dollar. And when you introduce uh, CBDC in the mix, uh, the conversations could go onto steroids. For example, um, discussions about dollarization uh, become a lot scarier if you have a dominant currency that becomes tokenized and now whether a private uh, or a CBDC currency that can be used all over the world that makes dollarization or yuanization as, uh, as uh, we might get into a more of a geopolitical issue because it can be invasive uh, if not controlled. And so these discussions at the highest levels are likely. 
Well, they're, they're not only likely, they're absolutely happening. And he's right to the point that digital yuan can be totally controlled. And that is a problem in the rest of the free world. And I would think probably a problem with the Chinese citizens if they could speak up and talk about it without actually having something bad happen to them. But this here from Matthew Lionai ties into the whole lead into the conversation of the digital yuan because we know China has been leading the race when it comes to central bank digital currency. Well, here we see Shanghai Clearinghouse is digital ledger technology enabled. What ledgers will be integrated? Well, we can take a look here and see some of the evidence pointing to it. It says Shanghai Clearinghouse launches digital yuan clearing and settlement services for bulk commodity trading, commodities and CBDC noted. Then here you can see a lot of the different players and things mentioned in here. Uh, it doesn't say Ripple or XRP inside of this, but it does talk about R3 and Hyperledger Fabric. We know those things, right? We know there's a relationship there. Uh, we know inside of this, they show the different diagrams here. Again, you're not going to see Ripple anywhere. You see R3's Corda or examples of private DLT systems here. So we'll keep an eye on it. But I wanted to show you this because on the heels of all of that news, right, we need to be reminded that Shanghai Bank uses Ripple for remittance corridor between the USA and China. And shout out to ISO 20022. Let's do it for this one. And this is a great reminder here from the worldbank.org here. So you can see Ripple has its own cryptocurrency XRP, which is actively traded on several crypto exchanges. It goes on to say the Shanghai Harai Bank recently announced that it is working on a remittance product using Ripple for the USA China corridor. So there is that. You know, uh, we have to watch all of these things because we do know, as I covered this morning in the last few days, we are looking for a launch in July of FedNow. Now, I've had a couple people tell me it's going to be like towards the end of July. I don't know the exact date. Some have said the 20th, the 21st. Uh, I, look, I just know that they're going to go live in July. I've been doing a countdown to July. I don't expect the price to go crazy because of it, but I wouldn't get upset if it did. But what I am excited about is what we're about to talk about right now. FedNow will be powered by Ripple Partners and Ripple. Ripple. Ripple is a partner to FedNow too. Let's get that out of the way, right? So with that being said here, let's take a listen to Ripple partner Valente brag about the fact that they're using Ripple and all the Valente customers are bragging about how good it works too. Take a listen. Uh, detail and depth in depth and the particular products. That I know that there's a lot of new things that you're working on, some things that you'd like to share with us. Sure. Uh, today, I think we have announced one more product, uh, which uh, uh, helps the latest technology, blockchain technologies, with these open ledger uh, technologies. We are already, uh, it's just out for the last few months, I guess, uh, with one of the companies called uh, Ripple. And we have already partnered with them, and we have a working product, in which we have demoed it here. Uh, uh, and we are going to demo that to a lot of our customers as well. And we are getting a lot of good traction there, saying uh, customers have looked at it, and they're saying this is great because it's uh, when they're thinking about these things, when we show the solution, they really love it. You know, very interesting for me because, of course, as you mentioned, blockchain is getting a lot of coverage. And I think a lot of people still associate it very much with Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. And that might not have given the, the right image of blockchain. So it's really refreshing to hear that uh, there's other applications in financial services and that uh, you, you've actually brought some of that into the market. I'd absolutely. like to hear a little bit more. Again, you're absolutely right because... Um Blockchain has been associated with Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of people have not been looking at other things, but I think now uh, the knowledge of blockchain technology is becoming a little more popular, and people are learning more on how it can be used, right? From the securities market to the payments market, um, the settlements, and all that. I think um, as we as we go forward, um, again there will be a lot of uh, excitement uh, regarding that, and a lot of new players. And eventually there will be shakeup, and then uh, some of the leading players will settle down as the leading leaders. Uh, and uh, by what we are trying to do is, it really doesn't matter which vendor you go with. Uh, which technologies we go through. We, our architecture itself is uh, built in such a way that uh, we are, I, I, I would like to use this uh, phrase called future proof, uh, which will support you as uh, the technology change or industry change, but you'll be able to uh, address it very in a very agile fashion to address those needs as you go forward. And, and there you have that. And just to clear matters up here, 
Ripple partner and FetNow service provider Valente say that customers can use XRP on its platform since it's connected to Ripple and Valente selected for U.S. Fedwire services provider. Valente Technologies, one of the most respected global providers of payment solutions, is settling transfer using XRP through a link with Ripple. Full stop. Actually, comma. But then it says here, which just selected Valente Powers Technology U.S. Fedwire as a service in the cloud. Valente responds that customers can make use of XRP on its platform since it's connected to Ripple. That's where we're at on this day, ladies and gentlemen, and I absolutely love it. Again, we need Judge Torres. Anybody seen Judge Torres? We're looking for a ruling, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're looking for. Not financial advice or me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. I'll catch all of you on the next one.